Krista Rodriguez is best known for her roles on the Broadway stage, but these days she's playing an icon of both the stage and the screen in Halston on Netflix. It's wiser with a Z, not Lisa with an S, cause Lisa with an S goes snot. It's Z instead of S, line instead of Lee. It's simple as can be, see Liza. Then M I double N, then E double L I. You double up the N, that's not new. Then E double L, and with an I, that's the way you say Manelli, Liza Manelli. Paul One Torek is here with the story for us. As Liza Manelli and the Netflix hit Halston, Krista Rodriguez is bringing a true stage and screen icon to life. Krista is quite the Broadway star herself, having appeared in seven shows. I recently met up with her to take a stroll through her resume. We're in the heart of the theater district. Yes, we are. And it's so good to see you. You and the, too. The, the I can't believe we get to like be here. waking up. Yes, right? it's absolutely. Coming back. I know you're excited about that. We're all excited for Broadway to come back because you're yeah. a real Broadway girl. I'm a Broadway baby, as Broadway they like baby. to say. Yes. Now Netflix. Not a, I Netflix mean, you know. Netflix baby too. Netflix baby too, but only when I get to sing. <laughs> Eugene O'Neill Theater, this yes. is like, this is kind of where it all started, It is right? where it all started, yes. Your first Broadway show. My first Broadway show was Good Vibrations. You played Bikini Girl. I was Bikini, I understudied, I understudied <laughs> Bikini Girl. Yes. Um, it was Amanda Klutz, actually, was Bikini Girl. So she's like that perfect bikini thing, and then I would come in like Scrappy Bikini Girl. Scrappy, okay, so you think of her as Scrappy Bikini Girl. I do, yeah, yeah, if I'm bringing myself to the role. But yeah, I remember turning the corner on that street and seeing the marquee for the first time, and like, being like, oh, this is real. Like, you, you kind of understand it, but you don't really feel it until you see the marquee. And then, you know, that show was sort of a, I guess we'd call it a failure, wouldn't we? Yeah, we would. And then, we call it, it a flop. Yeah, it's a flop. But then I went back to school. Like, I didn't think I was going to do any more performing. And then I got Spring Awakening, which happened to be almost two years to the day in this theater. It kind of was a restart. It was a new Broadway debut. You're unique in that you have actually two productions of the same show on your resume. Yes. Because you got to return to Broadway in Spring Awakening and work with your great friends Michael Arden and Andy Meandus. Yes. At a very difficult time in your life. I mean, right. that was after your very public breast cancer diagnosis. What was it like returning to this theater in Spring Awakening? That feels like that must have been really special. It was. I mean, the show was special to me to begin with. And yeah. like, one of the roles that I understudied in the original was Ilsa. And people would ask me for years, what was your favorite role you've ever played? And I would say Ilsa, even though I only played it maybe 20 times, like it just stuck with me. So when Andy called me and he knew that I was going through chemo and he was like, do you, what's your chemo schedule like? He's like, I think it'd be a good thing for you to keep your hands busy while you're in bed recovering from chemo sign to language. learn sign language. Yes, yes. So it was like great and it ended up he said, do you want to play Ilsa again? And I was like, that's like asking me if I was going to play Annie again. Like, I never, never thought I would be, I was 30. Like, you don't play Spring Awakening when you're 30, but we did. And, um, and then it moved to Broadway, and it was like, that show changed my life twice. The show in Feld Theater. Feld, yeah. You did one of my favorite, one of the most classic musicals ever. You were in a course line. Yeah. Did you play in a course line? I was BB. It's a show that can grow with you because there's so many diverse characters that you can join them on whatever phase of life you're in. So I was 23, playing 23. It was the first time I played my age. <laughs> I was always playing high school kids. And, um, and it felt like exactly who I was, like wide-eyed and ready to make it. And a couple years ago, I played Deanna Morales at the Hollywood Bowl. And that was like a completely different experience where I got to be, you know, where I really was in the business and like questioning some things or you're tired, but you know you love it and you have to do it. You were Wednesday Addams. Uh -huh. That's such an iconic character. It is an iconic character. In the Addams family. Uh -huh. Which audiences went crazy. Critics did not go crazy for Not part. crazy for it. Audiences no. absolutely went crazy. Which for is it. who we care about. We love to we love good exactly. audiences too. You've been one of the Broadway.com audience choice I award. I did, that's for right. That Highlight of my career. <laughs> one of my only awards ever, actually. Breakout well, performance. The fans chose. Thank you. So Thanks, what was that experience like doing that show? It was wild because I had never developed a show all the way from start to finish. Like when I was doing Spring Awakening, when I was doing In the Heights, I jumped in as the shows were moving to Broadway. So I was very used to just being like, oh, the, the quick version yeah. of it. And this was the long haul. And it was, you know, in, in the best ways, it's like everything you could imagine. It's also heartbreaking. You watch things get cut or changed or whatever. You see a show evolve and, and for better or for worse, sometimes that's great and sometimes it's not. But you get all of that, which is why it's a special experience. The Longacre Theater. Yes. I love this part of your career because I was like, look, Krista Rodriguez is a star. 
You were the leading lady. I was. Talk yeah. about that show. It was. I loved that show. I had so much fun doing it. And Zach and I were like first date. Su- first date. Yes. Zach. Zach, Zach Levi and Zach I Levi. were such good friends and collaborators. It's really great when you're a co-star and you can like get in the weeds together and figure stuff out. And I think that led to a lot of chemistry on stage, which people really responded to. And it was just a short, it was a small little cast. So yeah. we each had our own dressing rooms and it was like a fun little summer camp thing. Like we were all bunking up at the Long Acre for the summer and it was really, really fun. And like, again, like seeing your name on the marquee is why, this, that was a really wild one. And something I actually didn't really expect. I knew that Zach would have the big billing, but he was actually really, um, adamant that I have equal like standing with him because we were both on show uh, in the show the whole time. The Richard Rogers Theater, you got to do In the Heights. Yes, I yeah. did. Yeah. It was actually a great thing because I was doing Chorus Line at the time and I wanted to be in the show, but I was still been in my contract with Chorus Line. And they were offered another theater for Heights, and but they were going to have to move after a certain amount of time. But then the Rogers opened where they wouldn't have to move, but they pushed their opening, which meant I could do the show. Ah. So the fact that it was in the Richard Rogers is why I got to be in In the Heights. The other reason why I love this theater is because this is the only theater that both you and Liza Minnelli have performed yes. at on Broadway. Yes. And you are having this amazing moment right now in Paul on moment. Netflix, which I loved. Thank I adored you. it. How scary was it to take on the role of Liza Minnelli? I'm like scared even hearing you ask me that question. Like, it's still, I can't believe it happened. I can't believe I did it. I can't believe people are watching it. Like, none of it is believable to me. When you watch documentaries about Halston, Eliza talks about him. Yeah. She's very careful about what she says. And you can you can sense a real care in how she wants his legacy to be preserved in his name. And I actually felt the same thing from your performance Thank as you. Liza. I felt like you were doing that for her. It was in my research, actually. And, and I did a lot of work with the director, Dan Minahan. We like worked on what was sort of the, what I keep saying, the calibration of where she was and who she was at, at any given time. And one of the things that I found in my research was that I had only known Liza as Liza. Yeah. And there is a lot of evidence of her before that. Yeah. And she is actually quite still. She is very subtle. Any performance she does, like when she's doing her first musicals, she never blinks. Like, go back and watch Liza when she's in her 20s. She never blinks. She is like the stillest face. She's not mugging. She's not pulling anything. She is really honoring every text that she's singing. And so that was a big realization for me, is that she she was a real performer. I've, I've just gotten so used to the copy of the copy of the copy to get back to who she actually was and what her dreams were for her career was really inspiring to me.